I'm Lance Lambert. Thanks for tuning in to the Vintage Vehicle Show. We are in Burbank, California at Hollywood Hot Rods. This is one of their premier hot rod building shops in the United States. Great stuff in here, a lot of projects, a few finished things you're going to take a closer look at. So I want you to do what we do every week, just kick back, relax, and enjoy the show. I'm very excited and honored to be here at Hollywood Hot Rods, and we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Troy Ladd. Troy, thank you very much for the invite to come take a look. Oh, thanks for coming. This is, it's amazing, you're amazing. I have noticed, you know, looking at, at the magazines and looking at the shows and, and looking at just the whole community, you certainly are becoming one of the major players. Uh, we're trying. Yeah. yeah it, it, takes a lot of, it takes a lot of work as far as actually putting out product, um, marketing, image, there's a whole lot that goes into, into that and just... Um, being lucky a uh -huh. little bit. <laughs> a little bit. Take, take us back to the, the first time you had a fender in front of you and a, and a hammer weld or you know what what started it all? Well originally uh, I started um, on the mechanical end learning how to repair cars and then working on, on um, uh, my Mustang. I had a 66 Mustang. Well, mostly working for performance aspects and um, again it was a necessity because I didn't have any money and needed to repair it and then from there I kind of got fired up about it and excited and then built the car for performance reasons to go faster you know uh, on the weekend so that's kind of how it started and then from there it just turned into a sickness that never went away it looks like uh, this this is a backhanded compliment but it looks like it, and a sincere one it looks like I, I did a little research on you and, and taking a look at some of your projects and people can try and put you in in this box mm -hmm. and people can try and put you in this box but you're you look like you're just taking the best of everything and, and you're you're not playing by some of the rules that uh, right well the, the idea is what we've really kind of evolved into is a, I, I have like a um, I, I really like the traditional style we do traditional style hot rods but we're not bound to it. I mean, it's kind of one of our even little mottos, we respect tradition, but, but not bound by it. And we like, again, the aesthetic and the lines and that kind of feel of a traditional car, but we like modern performance and, um, you know, modern function. So, and a lot of what we do is, is kind of handmade or custom made as well, so there's a little bit of artistic, um, you know, um, direction that we take on these projects because well, because we can, <laughs> you know, and that's part of the thrill for me is the artistic creation part of it, not just reproducing something that somebody has done over and over and over. I want to take it and twist it and turn it into something a little bit different or a little bit unique. Can we take a look in your shop here at maybe the, the beginning of a project? Some, sure. some place where you're, you're We've starting We've got lots of something. beginnings. <laughs> okay, let's, let's go find a beginning. Okay. okay. What do you have here? Looks like a combination of a couple different things. Yeah, it's a 31 Roadster body, um, and that's actually it's an all steel body reproduced by Brookville. We use a lot of Brookville um, of products because they're very accurate to the original. Um, we have a, a handmade um, 32 chassis that we're building for it. And that was kind of a common traditional thing to put a Model A on a 32, you know, on 32 frame rails. Um, this one we've. It's a little unique. We've remade the front section to get the car a little bit lower. It's got a little bit more sweep in the rails. We've got it kicked in in the back and it follows the wheel well. Uh, so it'll be a really low but vintage. This will be really more period, very, very period car. Um, even though we have a lot of this handmade stuff to get a little bit more impact, you know, visually. Um, those are uh, artillery wheels. They're actually Studebaker wheels that we've decided to use for this particular project. This will get a uh, flathead with a an SCOT blower, so a little blown flatty in it. Well, you have the body on the frame here. Here you have no body but a lot of frame and yeah. some motor. What do you have going on here? Um, this is this is pretty much just a basic uh, 33 chassis. Um, there's a little five window coupe body that goes on top of this chassis. Um, this is really built for to be a, a really nice driver you know no show car you can see everything's powder coated black and there's not a, a lot of chrome um, small black Chevy isn't real creative you know as far as traditional aesthetic goes you know it's not a flatty it's not something an old or something but it starts and gets you there that's right and and you know this is a full fendered car and this is actually a survivor car because this was a hot rod that was built 
Um, it's hard to pinpoint it, but it was, you know, mid 50s, late 50s, and just really, really scary. Uh-huh. <laughs> just the, uh, I think the engineering of the era, at least scary. Uh-huh. <laughs> just the, uh, I think the engineering of the era, at least whoever did this one, it was really pretty sketchy. So we're actually kind of putting this car together like he would have wanted it. Uh-huh. The owner that bought it, he bought it in the 50s. He's held on to it since then. We looked at a couple of the beginnings there. You have another beginning here. You have the flat head that looks like, with the exception of the intake manifold, at least outside, has not been altered too much. Mm-hmm. You have a five-window coupe body on this. What, what's the plans for this? Uh, this is actually uh, a very period correct piece. Um, it's a 31 Model A, you know, five-window coupe, and we did a four-inch shop on it already. Um, we made this frame. This is again a 32, a set of 32 frame rails that we made for this car. We've actually reshaped these rails quite a bit to match the contour of the body, and that's why the front cowl section and the firewall actually sits down over it. Whereas real 32 rails, uh, well, unmodified 32 rails, the two don't really match. So again, it's, it's the same thing. Even though this is a period car for us, we're trying to put a little bit more effort into it to make it aesthetically a little bit cleaner and it's a little bit tighter than maybe what you would have done in the 50s. A question that I've asked other builders on the show, and I'll ask you also, is you have a five-window coupe here. Mm-hmm. For decades, three-window coupes were the car to have. Five-window, if you were absolutely desperate and couldn't find anything else, you went ahead and begrudgingly used a five windows. Not everybody thought that way, but a lot of people did. In the last four or five years, five windows have become just fine. What do you think happens that makes it, you know, somebody with a magic wand Mm. says, hey, this is okay now. It wasn't okay a moment ago, but bing, now it's okay. The way the styles evolve and things, they have have to do with a lot of factors. Currently, there's, again, a big, kind of big revival of traditional cars. And I think when you get into 50s more period cars like this one, uh, you know, Model A's were, were very common. You know, five window was very common to build in the 50s. But there's there's that and also availability. Just the, the availability of steel. Um, you just can't go pick yourself up a 32 three window coupe, you know, and build a nice little hot rod. You know, for uh, you know, a body like this will run you eight, 10 grand, but to try to find a 32, you're gonna pay or 50. So that, I think a lot, a lot of that rolls into it. And even with um, the off brands, you know, people are building you know, Chevys and Dodges and things, whereas before you really stayed away from that. And again, it, a lot of that's availability. Um, and uh, there's a, a lot of people wanting to get into the hobby. You just can't get in you know, on some of those higher budget numbers. I mean, you can get in with a Model A. And a lot of people can afford a Model A that could never afford a, a 32. Harden heads, yep. blower, un- very unique front suspension. Yeah. <laughs> Roll cage. What on earth do you what have is here? This? <laughs> this is an actual purpose-built race car that we were commissioned to build for the La Carrera Panamericana race. La Carrera Panamericana. Yeah, in Mexico. Huh? It's a road race. It's been been happening since gosh, I think maybe even late 40s. I mean, don't don't quote me. Yeah. But it's quite some time. Um, and it's an on-road race, not off-road. You know, it's like a road race through the mountains, through the cities, and it's uh, 2,000 miles. Yeah, incredible history on that race. Yeah. And so we're uh, a, a customer of ours named Ron Lee, we've done a few cars for, um, decided that he wanted to race in that race with a race car built for that race. So we actually got, he got permission to build a vintage car. So we're actually building this in the vintage car class to race that race. But um, it's a hand-built, full-on, real race car. So it's a 31 Model A pickup truck body. Uh, Obviously, uh, an Arden-headed, a blown Arden-headed flathead. Um, the, The chassis is all tube chromoly with integrated roll cage uh, you know, frame rail, suspension is all integrated chromoly. So all of the body panels unbolt away from the tube, the tubing. So you actually have this complete race car with no body, and then we bolt the body panels on around it. Um, we're trying to pick up the, again, traditional type of, you know, aesthetic and tradi- it's supposed to be a traditional car. 
So we have an, you know, a regular dropped I-beam type suspension, although it's aluminum, it's very light for unsprung weight, but it's actually sprung on a, uh, on a torsion bar type spring suspension. So there's torsion bars that run uh, longitudinal, at least on the front, and they attach to those arms that fit into rollers in the bat wings, and the whole thing is sprung as a floating suspension. When somebody is done in Mexico racing this and they decide to drive it to Bob's Big Boy, what kind of <laughs> ride are they going to have? Are they, are they going to wish they would have taken the other car, or is oh, it still no. going to be pretty good for the street? No, it's probably going to be, be better than, uh. it, I mean, we're hoping it's going to be better than any of his other hot rods. Uh. Uh, it's infinitely adjustable. Um, and, and I mean, just even sitting here, it's got such a smooth, a smooth action to it. He can adjust it soft, he can adjust it hard, up and down, whatever he wants to do. Looks so. like you got a bunch of radiator in the, in the bed, is that yeah, what's going on? Yeah, yeah, um, a lot of the race in Mexico is unpredictable. Um, he said he could, it's when you go through a city, you can be stuck in, you can get stuck in traffic for hours. So it's kind of over-engineered to be a really kind of foolproof car. So with the Arden, the flathead, it's going to be fairly built and the blower is real concerned about cooling issues. So yeah, there's a, a just a huge radiator in the bed. Uh -huh. There's nothing else really going on in the bed, so it's, so it's exceptionally large. There'll be no radiator in the front, just a, a small grill shell. Um, and, you know, theoretically you won't have to worry about cooling issues or anything like that. What may be confusing to some of the viewers that aren't familiar with art and heads is oh. that this is a flathead despite the fact that it doesn't look like a flathead. Mm. What's, what's the art and addition all about? Um, the difference is um, you can see the difference between the aluminum section and the black. This is the original flathead block and then this is the the Arden head so that actually bolts on top of the uh, you know the original flathead block, but the original flathead block had its uh, its intake and exhaust runners as part of the block, and the valves were in the block. So this is actually an overhead valve conversion, is is what the concept is. And you can even see, like right under here, is where his old exhaust ports are. Those are now blocked off, and the exhaust is in the head. You know, similar to say, you know, a small block Chevy, where you got intake in the head, exhaust in the head and valves in the head, uh -huh. whereas the flathead, all that was in the block. An awful lot of you viewers, I think, have a similar background that I have in that as you were coming up in the world, you were building model cars. Well, there's a couple of cars you probably built that were very popular. One was the Big T. That was kind of a pricey model kit. Only the Ridge Kits <laughs> built the Big T. But the Black Widow, that was affordable. Little black car like this one. You are building the, the, like this the Black Widow. <laughs> yes, we are. Um, this is the one-to-one -one real life version of the monogram model, the Black Widow. Um, as far as the research we have done and the owner has, has done as well, we can't find a real Black Widow. Um, I mean, there, there are other show cars that have, went, have gone by that name, but not this particular. As far as you know, the actual car was never built. Yeah, so as far as we're, we're all concerned, this is it. <laughs> so uh, it's really kind of exciting because he has us use, uh, you know, dial calipers and measure against the, uh, the scale, and we multiply the scale to build it exactly one-to-one. -one. I mean, there are a few... Um, a few concessions we have to make to turn him into a real car because in plastic they they took a few liberties right but for the most part i mean down to the length of the wishbones to the wheelbase to the the structure of the top everything is going to going to be exactly like the model well there shows uh some engine work there let's take a look over here you have your chassis on it mm -hmm. uh is this can you tell from the box art, is this a generic motor on the box art or was it a specific motor? Um, and, and what do you have here? Well, uh, it, it's, no, it's a specific motor. It was a, uh, a small block Chevy. Um, and based on the, the era of, this, of when this model was released and kind of you know, coming up with a good timeline. 285, Yeah, we, we, we have an actual numbers matching, you know, 19, uh, I think it's a 55. 265. Uh, 265. Uh -huh. so, Again, the owner was real, uh, real particular on 
you know, down to the detail. He wants to know if someone checks those numbers on that engine that it is the accurate engine for the year. And of course, there's no uh, side motor mounts and things like that that are pretty obvious distinguishing factors on an engine like this. Um, but on the model, you can't really see it on the box art, but on the actual model, you can see that it's got stock style um, exhaust manifolds. So we, you know, we have that's what we have here, the original type of manifold. And most everything on this engine, we've used um, restoration parts. So something from a, you know a catalog to restore your '55 Chevy is what we've used on this engine. Again, to give it that more uh, that more period accuracy. Um, of course, it's got you know chrome valve covers and a tri power and all that. Um, Do the cars in the shop here individually? develop kind of a personality? Do you walk here in the morning and flip on the lights and you look over and, oh yeah, I got to do that, I got to do that. Oh, there's that one we're working on that I really like. This is so much fun, this car. Mm -hmm. it, it, is that, or are they all, they're all equal? Uh, no, they're not equal. <laughs> yeah, they, they all take their own path, you know, and then um, uh, for, for me, I can see more of the kind of the aesthetic character in them, and, but a lot for the guys in the shop, a lot of the, a lot of a lot of these guys will develop their own opinion on the cars based on how much trouble they they're giving them. Too. Uh, That's another yeah. thing. Yeah. You know, because some of the cars they just fight you every step of the way, mm -hmm. and other one other cars just fall together. Um, the little Model A coupe we looked at earlier, that was a fairly simple build, but it's got out of the blue. It has so much character. It's got this vintage character to it that just kind of popped once we put the frame and the body together and gave it the chop. That that one. That's one of the cars I'd like to have, you know, out of the cars in the shop. It really came alive. Um, so they all kind of take their own direction, and a lot of it's a matter of opinion. Some people are going to be drawn to, to you know, something like this, whereas, you know, other people will be drawn to something a little bit more mild yet, period, you know. I had a 52 Chev with 30,000 original miles on it that I was having a shop up in Seattle do some significant work to. By the time I picked that car up, they hated it. Yeah. They, they were swearing when I drove yeah. off in that car. You know, they, and they, they really were. They, that, the main guy there hated that car. So it's, uh, it's interesting. And he broke my heart. I never took the work back there again. Oh. And, and a while later, it's like, you know, I hate this car too. And I sold it. So one of the first cars that I spotted in the shop is what I thought was a 35 Ford Coupe, which sort of kind of is, sort of kind of <laughs> yeah. isn't. Tell us about this. Uh, this is this started as a 35 sedan. Um, and when I say sedan, I mean extra windows and a hump back. Uh -huh. What happened is he really was after a Zephyr. And he had drawings and this idea in his head of, of this really swoopy Art Deco. The whole theme of the build is Art Deco. He wanted a Zephyr couldn't find his effort and um, ended up with pieces of a 35 Ford coupe um, but in that in essence we ended up building a 35 sedan because the, the pieces we had weren't enough to build a car so we took the sedan used a lot of those pieces with a lot of handmade pieces and created this we call it the Zephyrette. <laughs> it's got pieces of quite a few different things on it to again uh, to meet this design that he had designed for us. And I looked at the car, the front fenders are Ford, no wait a minute, that's yeah. the, and the headlight pods, no wait a minute, and the back fenders especially, so start, start yeah. and, and the grill, I, I totally <laughs> blew that. I said Packard, it's not. Tell us about what's going on up here. Well, um, actually I'll kind of back into the front a little bit, because what happened in the rear, wanting this Zephyr, is uh, the rear fenders, the rear end, everything got extended and swoopy and long. And then as the, 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 the project progressed, um, we came to the front and said, whoa, we extended the rear, we got to do something in the front. And we'd already had the frame and a lot of things built. He's like, well, I don't want to start redoing you know, the frame, but we got to stretch the front to match the rear. So what happened is we ended up using uh, Plymouth fenders, which kept the center of the wheel uh, in the same position, but gave us about four inches on the front. So this area, yeah. yeah. So we got our length. So then, the, the, so that gave us the length that we needed. Then those were uh, combined with Ford fenders. And this this area here, this is Ford. This is handmade. These are Plymouth. This is Chevy truck. Hmm. Wow. This is a, actually a white 
truck. Uh, sort grill. of Packardish. You'll give sort me of that Packardish, one, yes. Yeah, very okay. Packardish, but wider. Uh -huh. The hood is, uh, this is a Ford three-piece, you know, the top of a three-piece hood that we added a peak to, added this emblem, which is of unknown origin, uh, eBay. <laughs> uh, the hood sides are handmade with uh, welded in vents uh -huh. to kind of match the 35. So it's just a conglomeration of, of pieces in order to meet uh, a design. Well, so I, I think what you have here is uh, a 36 uh, Hudson. Okay. <laughs> it's a good guess. I believe you. Yeah, all right. <laughs> the back fenders, we referred to them earlier. Let's take a, a closer look at some of the styling on those. Okay. This is really interesting back here, and there's a lot going on here. Tell yes, us about this. Is. Uh, well, the, the entire back of the car has been uh, lengthened a great deal. The center section, actually the body of the car, I think we're close to six inches longer there. Then the actual fenders are about eight inches longer than they would be on a 35 slash 36 Ford. Part of what has happened is he wanted a really kind of a sharp fin-like appearance. So it's got a really sharp peak and they're not symmetrical. It's actually got uh, a kind of a rounded outside and then it dives sharp on the inside here. So and that was kind of by design and that's really what he was after. Then also in the process, it, it, the tail end ended up with a rolled pan and these are Hudson tail lights that are actually you know, have molded in housing and part of the metal. Um, the bumper, this little bumperette guy here, these are mercury bumper overriders that have been cut and modified and we made the center section with this little peak. Again, we we're kind of matching peaks all over the car for that, you know, this little bumperette look. Um, then the deck lid area as well is just a, a shape that was designed and there's really not a lid, factory lid that looks like that in Ford or, or Zephyr for that matter. But it, it, it matched the lines of the car, uh -huh. so that was the design, you just, you just kind of make it. The extension on the fenders, I, I think I'm seeing a weld there at one point. So do we have, do we have Ford to that point and then fabrication shop well, beyond that? Well, to be honest, um, the, this is Ford, that's fabricated, that front part's probably Ford, the, the peak is handmade, um, this inner panel is handmade, um, and then the skirts, it's got a full flush mount skirt, that's also all handmade. Uh, so it's, it's kind of a, a mix, but I, I believe we, we ended up using a couple of fenders to come up with, with the pieces for one, plus a lot of handmade parts. Everybody knows about 32 Fords. They're beautiful, they're an icon, maybe the icon of the entire hot rod history. This is a 32 Ford, but boy, is this a different 32 Ford. Tell us about yep, it. Yep, no, that was the idea is uh, we actually built this car to compete in the uh, America's Most Beautiful Roadster competition at the uh, Grand National Roadster Show. The Amber Show. Award. The Amber. But the idea was to, to do a 32 Roadster because, I mean, that is kind of the iconic car, but how do you do one different when there's, you know, half a million of them, or I don't know how many. Just about every dimension and every piece of it, including, you know, uh, the, the body and the sheet metal have been reworked, modified, changed, you know, reshaped in one way or another. Um, so the first thing that you'll notice is, is that it's a little bit lower and sleeker than a typical 32 Ford because it's got a two inch section taken out of the whole body. Then the wheel wells have been moved up uh, five inches. Um, all of the door gaps have been changed a little bit and the, the radius has been rounded a little bit. And a lot of um, kind of structural race inspired bracing and gusseting are obvious like on the firewall and all over pieces of the car. So that's kind of where the direction uh, took us. So it's really race inspired yet classy with a little bit of European design element like the exposed hinges, uh, the flip top cap, those are kind of European sports car elements. So that's kind of how this evolved. Obviously a Chrysler Hemi in here, the, the history of this motor and the choice because it's traditional and then you have what appears to be the injection here? Um, yes, that, that the engine was originally slated to go in a, a top fuel dragster in the 60s called the uh, Rat Trap. It just so happened I ended up, uh, ended up with it. It didn't go in the car, it wasn't even built for it yet, but that was what the intention was for the engine, then the injection, that's vintage um, Hillborn. They don't make that model anymore. It was specific to 50s, 60s era. 
Uh, but what we have done is we've taken uh, all the electronics from a modern fuel injection system and hidden them under the valley pan um, and retained all down, of the mechanical. Down in this area. Yeah, yeah, right under there. Um, all of these lines are the what would be the original mechanical lines, but we've retained those to run to a distribution block here, which gives the computer a vacuum signal. But on the original version of this, this would have been a barrel valve, so it still retains the exact look of the mechanical system, but it's run by computer. If some of our viewers out there are watching this show and they're thinking, this guy's got some pretty good ideas and he seems to, you know, the, the impression is you know what you're doing here. Yeah, we think so. Yeah. <laughs> how, how would they get in contact with you? Uh, you, can, you can look at our website, it's hollywoodheartrods.com, and of course uh, we're in Burbank and you can always just call us up. Mm -hmm. And amazingly enough, we're looking at the uh, website address right now. That's great. Yeah, yeah. Troy, thank you very much for thank having you. us here. This uh, Hollywood Hot Rods is an amazing place. Uh, you are an amazing artist and metal man and everything else I can think of. So, again, thank <laughs> you very much for being on the Vintage thank Vehicle Show. Thank you for coming show. by. All right. And thank you for watching the Vintage Vehicle Show. We hope you've enjoyed it. If you like this show, then tune in again next time. Until then, bye-bye.